Well, students, we're gonna make an abstract portrait today connected to Pablo Picasso. You could create a self-portrait, um, an abstract portrait of you, or a, um, or, or just can be a portrait, a picture of a person. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple things to help you out just with spacing and size. So this first part, this is an oval shape and you can have it be straight. Um, I'm gonna turn, choose to like turn mine just a little bit, just to make it a little bit more, um, just, I don't know, uh, give it more feeling and emotion. So here, I'm gonna move that over and then we're gonna outline this. I wanna leave enough room for the hair. I also wanna leave en enough room for the neck and the shoulders. So I'm gonna lightly trace this because some of this I might end up um, erasing. So trace that out then there's also a silhouette. Now you can use this and then you can exaggerate it and change it, but this is there, I can have it be this way, I could flip it over and have it go the other way, but one of the reasons that we're using this silhouette is because um, Pablo Picasso would often do um, his portraits with multiple views, so it's like a side view and a front view all in one. So I'm gonna outline that and once that's done, then I would like you to make sure that you're making things that are big enough. Because if you don't make things big enough, then it's gonna be hard to paint this. So when I'm working on this, the, the pencil part should be fairly quick. Um, this edge of the nose here, I'm just gonna kind of create a curved line so it does look like it's kind of pointed to the side. You could have your mouth be open or you could have it be closed. I'm just gonna have this kind of like an arrow shape and I'm just gonna end up having a line that um, crosses here. I'm gonna think about eyes. One of the things that um, Pablo Picasso did was he would make things a little bit exaggerated, larger than they normally would be. But think about details, like I'm gonna have maybe the center of the eye. Um, and I'm keeping it big enough to think, hmm, am I gonna be able to, um, will I be able to paint this? Thinking about additional details like um, eyebrows and um, ears. Now, if I want to change this shape a little bit, like say I want this to not be as round, you can always kind of just change your shapes a little bit. If I want it to be a little bit more angled or um, Pablo Picasso was famous for doing cubism, so you can change those shapes a little bit as well. Now, once I'm done with this side, I'm gonna think about adding um, the other side of the face. I could go with the same exact shapes, but here I'm gonna to choose to go with something that's a little bit more rectangular um, as, a, as another eye. I'm gonna do kind of like a square shape with maybe a curved shape inside, uh, maybe a rectangular shaped eyebrow. Um, and I will put an ear on this side as well. Now once I have these shapes on here, I do wanna think about doing the neck. Um, you can think about your clothing. Maybe I'm gonna have a shirt like I'm wearing uh, when I teach, like a collared shirt. I'm gonna have this um, kind of crossover, and it's really imaginative. So it could go right off the edge of the page. Maybe I'm gonna put a button on here, um, maybe a pocket shape. Um, I'm gonna add an extra line just so it'll be easier for color. When this is done, I would like you to think about um, additional things like the hair. I could do, um, I'm gonna do a hairline here, so it's gonna actually cover up the top of that. Um, and then my hair is kind of spiky, so let's make this maybe a self-portrait. I'm gonna do a line that kind of comes up and have that kind of come over here. And let's go with this too, and maybe an extra line. Now if there's um, a line here that covers the, um, the hair covers the top of the head, you can always erase that so then the hair looks like it's on the top of the head. A couple of additional things that are good things for spacing would be doing um, an eyelid. That could be a good way to use space or like a cheek shape. Then this is gonna be able to add extra color to it. So maybe I'm gonna have a cheek shape over here or maybe an eyelid shape there too. If you did wanna add any um, you know, eyelashes or something, it's exaggerated. Once I have my shapes on here, I do want you to add uh, 
I'm, I'm gonna say four or five lines. Um, three could be okay depending on the size. They could be going straight across. Um, they could be going vertical. I'm gonna have mine look like it's kind of going like down a hallway where these lines are gonna start off wider on this side, but then they're gonna be skinnier here. So that's one line, two lines, three lines. Let's add, add a fourth line up here, okay? When you have that much done, I do want you to make sure that you put your name on the back because, um, and I'll tell you when it would be good to do that, but I would like you to make sure your name is on it before we start painting. And you can write your class code on here as well. Now, once you have that ready, then I'll give you a paintbrush. I'm glad that I made all of my lines big enough so that it's gonna be easy to paint it, that things are not too tiny. So here, you really won't need any water, but it's okay to get just like the tip of your brush wet. Don't rinse it all out. Um, and you can use this just to use a little bit of paint. You don't want too much on your brush. And you just want just the tip of your brush touching. So here, I'm gonna to barely touch it to the page. I'm gonna paint part of a line, then I'll dip it back in. I'll paint part of a line. This paint can stain your clothes. So you don't want to, um, you wanna be careful with where you're touching the paper. So I'm just gonna wipe it off a little bit and just paint a line, dip it back in. Paint a line and dip it back in. Now I'm gonna paint a really long line so you can see what happens if you run out of paint. So if I don't dip it back into the paint and I start painting, eventually I'm gonna start running out like that. If that happens, you can always just paint the line back on there, but that's why I usually just do like a little bit, then I dip it back in. It will be important to finish painting these lines today so it gives a chance for your paper to dry because we can't start adding the oil pastel to this next week if you have wet paper. So I'm only gonna give you a small amount of time to work with pencil because most of our time we'll be painting this. Always just have just the tip of your brush touch because if you push too hard with your brush, then it will make the line get really wide. So if the line gets too wide, it's gonna start to cover up some of your things. So here, just take your time paint your line and dip it back in. Just paint a little bit and you'll keep going. Now, I'm holding my brush like a pencil right above the metal part and my brush is not making a sound. If you miss a line like I just did, that's okay. I would not go back and try to paint that again. After this dries, Next week, we can erase any of the pencil line. So if you miss a line, don't worry about it. You don't want to paint it over too much because then it can make the line get really thick. So just leave it alone. The next time, we'll end up erasing that. As you can see, that line I just painted twice, it got really dark and really thick. So here, I'm gonna not do too much more because I would like you guys to have more work time. But please continue to follow that idea of paint a little bit, dip it back in, paint a little bit, dip it back in. I hope you're noticing that I'm not adding a bunch of water. The only time that I might add a little bit of water to my brush is at the beginning, just to get it wet, make sure it's in a, in a point. If you need to, you only get like a drop of water, you don't rinse it all out, just to keep your paint gliding onto the paper. So that's almost too many lines. It started to get a little bit scratchy, a scratchy line. So here, I'm just gonna continue. Once the face is done, we will paint everything else. So I'm gonna paint today the shirt. I will paint the lines in the background but I'm gonna stop mine here 
after I paint one of these lines in the background. And then if you get a little bit of paint on the table, we'll need to wipe that up because this paint um, can stick to the table. And we already said it can make your uh, stain your clothes. So I would paint the pocket, the buttons, all of these things, the other side of the neck here, um, and the lines in the background. One last little thing I wanted to show you. Um, if you're um, doing girls' hair, you can see I already drew this out, but um, whether it's straight hair, curly hair, some of these lines are kind of fun to paint. Um, just kind of fills up that space. These lines are really a long line. So here, you gotta make sure to use enough paint. And I'm just having these lines just do a little bit and then we'll go around that loop. But this can be kind of a fun way to do a female self-portrait, or a female portrait, or it could be a self-portrait. Um, just using some of these lines to kind of fill out that space. You can see I don't have a lot of line to do in the background because the hair is using up so much of this space, but that's okay. But you can see how the hair kind of frames the face and then these lines that are here that are pencil, I would end up erasing next time, but this is a good way to kind of fill up that space. So let's have fun working on these. We'll get the painting done so the next week we can add some oil pastel to them. Oh, also at the end, when we're totally done, then you can put your brush in the water. Do not put it all the way in the water until um, we are finished and it's cleanup time. Thank you.